In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord's peace be with you all. My brothers and sisters, we have made the transition to ordinary time. The green vestments have returned. But these days are anything but ordinary. And so uh, you may hear uh, sirens and helicopters during this recording. There is a, uh, a peaceful protest march uh, coming into our neighborhood. So today we pray for all of those who protest for peace, for those who are righteous in their anger and measured in their response. We pray for all of those who stand up for others and fight for the rights of all, that all of us may do so peacefully, honorably, and with a spirit of justice. Today we are going to celebrate um, a ritual mass, a mass in the time of war or civil, diso- or civil disturbance. It is a prayer for peace. Lord Jesus, we open ourselves to your mercy and we pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, author and lover of peace, to know you is to live, to serve you is to reign. Defend against every attack those who cry to you, so that we who trust in your protection may not fear the weapons of any foe, Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Beloved, wait for and hasten the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace, and consider the patience of our Lord as salvation. Therefore, beloved, since you are forewarned, be on your guard not to be led into error of the unprincipled or to fall from your own stability, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory now and to the day of eternity. Amen. The word of the Lord. Our response. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Before the mountains were begotten and the earth and the world were brought forth, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. To you, men, you turn humans back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past or as a watch of the night. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Seventy is the sum of our years, or eighty if we are strong, and most of them are fruitless toil, for they pass quickly, and we drift away. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. Let your work be seen by your servants, and your glory by their children. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Some Pharisees and Herodians were sent to Jesus to ensnare him in his speech. They came to him and said, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you are not concerned with anyone's opinion. 
You do not regard a person's status, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Should we pay or should we not pay? Knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why are you testing me? Bring me a denarius to look at. They brought one to him, and he said to them, Whose image and inscription is this? They replied to him, Caesar's. So Jesus said to them, Repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. And they were utterly amazed at him. The Gospel of the Lord. I heard the voice and the words of God last night. It came from a woman of great spirituality and prayer, uh, of practical and broad intelligence and insight. The Episcopal Bishop from Washington, D.C., Bishop's Booty, she, I thought, was masterful in her response to all that has gone on from Minnesota to Washington, D.C., where she has traveled in her professional career. I thought she was insightful uh, in her response to the violence uh, and the protests, both the righteous protests and those that have been manipulated, thought she was really eloquent in her response to the president's use of her church as a backdrop and a prop and his complete uh, and disrespectful use of a Bible in his hands yesterday. She, I think, did what Jesus did in today's gospel. She recognized hypocrisy at work, and she did not bow to it. She did not get drawn into a question of who was right or who was wrong. She didn't personalize this in any way. She was critical of poor behavior and then moved to what she believes in that her church is a place of prayer, that her community is one of welcome, that the values that we espouse as Christians are values of dignity and respect for all people and every creature. And when these symbols, when these actualities are diminished, then people can rightfully question where they fit and how they belong. I think that she spoke a a measured and insightful message in a very complex situation. I think Jesus did the same thing. I can imagine a crowd of people around him, some longing for the words that he spoke, words of affirmation and welcome, of reconciliation and forgiveness, of healing and belonging. I can imagine others in that crowd being unsettled and upset by those words because it was going to disrupt their status quo. And it is very clear that Some groups intentionally infiltrated that group in front of Jesus in order to cause problems. And Jesus sidesteps the problems, returning the issue to the instigators and the whole of the crowd. And I think the bishop did a similar thing yesterday. And I think our gospel asks the same of us today. We should pay close attention to what's going on. 
and we should feel frightened and embarrassed and angry and worried. And we should recognize that we all then have the opportunity to adjust our behaviors and to control our responses. Not simply to withhold from violence, but to say, what more can I do to learn, to appreciate a different face of the complexities that face us? How can I be different in a way that creates peace because I am affected by what's going on around me? In Christian circles, in the Catholic Church, we call that the process of conversion, of becoming. In human terms, we call that growing up. How do we learn from our experiences and our past? And sometimes it's following the wise example of Jesus, of Episcopal bishop and smart woman, to not take the bait but to keep our eyes on truly what is the issue and the problem and to learn in our minds and in our hearts about the issue and to remember that the issue always comes back to people and persons and the rule that Jesus gave us to love our brothers and sisters as we ourselves desire to be loved. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which the earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all this church. O Lord, be mindful that your Son, who is himself peace, has destroyed our hatreds by his blood. And look at mercy on our evil deeds and grant that those whom you love, this sacrifice may restore peace and tranquility through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, we know that by testing us, you change our hearts and prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your Spirit, you move human hearts, that enemies may speak to each other, adversaries join hands, and peoples seek to meet together. By the working of your power it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. And therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty from earth, and without end we do acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we had turned away from you on account of our sin, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, 
we entreat you. Sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he took bread into his hands, and he gave you thanks, offered a blessing, broke the bread, and shared it with his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took a chalice of blessing into his hands, and once again, confessing your mercy, he shared the chalice with his disciples and friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed upon us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit, a spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity, an instrument of your peace among all people. May he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with your blessed apostles, with Francis and Claire and all of your saints, together with our brothers and sisters and those of every race, tongue, and experience who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them in the unending banquet of unity, in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress and anxiety, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, you say to us here and now, my peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. Do not look upon our selfishness nor our sin. Rather, be attentive to our generosity, to our mercy, and to our faith. And graciously grant us the peace and unity that is in accord with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. My brothers and sisters, may the peace of the Lord be with you all. Peace be with you, everyone. Peace to our world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
our prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, grant to us that nourished with the delights of the one bread that fortifies the human heart, we may successfully overcome the fury of war and resolutely keep your laws of love and justice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With you may Almighty God bless us, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This celebration is ended. Let us go forth to love and serve our God and to take good care of one another. Thank you, Peter God. Have a good day, everyone.